I've added in some HTML into our game object. And I'm going to be actually erasing all of this HTML, and we're going to be doing this all with JavaScript. And that's going to be coming up within this lesson and the next lessons. We're going to construct all of these elements, apply the various styling, adding in content, adding in classes, and then setting various attributes of those elements as we build them with JavaScript. So at the end of the day and at the end of uh, the project, we're going to remove out all of this excess HTML. And of course, we want to focus on JavaScript. So that's what we're going to do in, in the upcoming lessons. And before we do that, we're going to set up some variables that we're going to use within the code in order to construct game. So going into the script file, and just before we're initiating, let's set up some variables that we're going to use within the game. This variable called game is where we're going to house some of the game information as well as the elements that we're going to be creating and mimicking what we see within the HTML. And in order to do that, let's take a look at some documentation first. So some of the JavaScript methods that we're going to be making use of in this lesson is query selector. So what query selector does is it allows us to select from the document object using query selector and applying a selector value, finding the matching element on the page. So it founds the first one that matches the specific selection. And if there's no matches, then it's just going to return back null. Also, we're going to be using create element. So this allows us to create elements using JavaScript, allows us to create elements dynamically, and we can apply some properties to those elements. So we specify the different type of elements that we want to create. In this example, they're creating a div. So you're just using document.createElement, it creates a div, adding in some text. So creating some text node content, and then using append child to append that content into the main container. So it's grabbing a main container and then appending content into it and outputting it here within the page. Once you have an element object, either you've created it or you've selected it, you can apply various styling, so inline styling. So these are all the typical styles that you would have with CSS. And this is going to be what's going to allow us to apply the various style properties that we see on the page. So it's not just completely just regular HTML. We do have some hot, some larger font sizes, and so on. So we can apply all that styling as well as colors. And we can also set attributes to the element. So once we've got the element selected or created, we can set attributes. We specify the attribute name and then the attribute value that we're setting to it. There's two different ways that we can append content. So there's append child, and this is a method that adds a node to the end of the list of child. So basically, you get the parent element and then you can append a child to it, and that's going to add it onto the page. And as we saw here, when they create an element, then they do the append child to add it to the new div. So the new div gets appended, the new content, and then we get uh, getting element by ID. So it's selecting the div on the page, which is this one, and we're adding in, so it's adding in. And there's also options here where you can insert before and so on. So there's a number of different ways to append content to the element. And here, they're just selecting the document body and they're inserting content there. We've also got the append as well. So this is another way to insert and set content into the node. And there are some differences from append child. So append allows you to append DOM string objects and append child only accepts node objects. Uh, there are also some differences that there's no return value on append, whereas append child returns the appended node object. And if you're not going to be using that, then you can just go ahead and use append. So we are going to be using append uh, as opposed to append child because we don't need to return the object as we're going to be building out the same object. And with append as well, you can append several nodes and strings, whereas with append child, we've only got one that we're able to append. So this will also allow us to minimize some of the code that we're writing. So let's get back into the project, and we're going to do all of this within the INIT. So the objective, again, is to build out the exact same thing that we see here on the page, except, and then we'll remove out that main part. So what I'll do is I'll create a separate div and get rid of the game ID on this one. And we're going to use this with JavaScript to construct all of this content. So let's use the game object that we created 
earlier. So this is our main container for all of the elements. And we can call this the main container. And then using documents and query selector, selecting the element that has the ID of game. So just like you would with styling, you specify the hash for ID, the dot for classes, and then nothing for the, the tag names. And if I console log out the value of game, we're going to see that particular element is now contained within the game object. So this is going to give us access to that element. And at this point, we can select and we can update content contained within there. So if we want to do game main and do text content, we can write hello world. And that will apply the text content into that main object of hello world. So how about we create some elements and we see the first one here has some content dealer versus player. So this is the scoreboard content where we're going to be outputting the score to the player. So let's create a name for it and I'm going to call it game.scoreboard and then using document create element and the element that we're creating is going to be a div. So we're mimicking exactly what we've got contained here. And then we can set the text content of the game scoreboard and set the text content and whatever we want the text content to equal to. So let's add in the text content there. And then we also need to append it. So we've got the game main object and then we can use append to append game scoreboard object into there. So we see we've got the game scoreboard object and I can get rid of the text there because we're not going to need that. And one last thing before we conclude this lesson is going to be game scoreboard and updating the style and setting the style. We need to update the font size. So this is going to be font size and giving it a value of 2EM to match what we have in the below element. Now when you open the HTML page and you go to inspect and we look at the contents that we've got within the game object, this is actually already matching with what we have here below. So the first element now has been created and now we've got a bunch more to create. And I know this is going to be more time consuming than just using the HTML, but we do want to get lots of practice in to writing the JavaScript code with the elements, as well as once we're setting them within the game object, we have access to them within the game so we can rewrite the content of the score and we can make updates to the various elements as needed. So it's going to be a crucial part to making the gameplay work. But before the next lesson, if you want, you can go through the HTML and build it out with JavaScript. And the next lesson, I'm going to be walking you through how we're going to construct the exact same content here using JavaScript. So that's coming up in the next lesson.